don't know how we end up here, but your girl is going to see if she has what it takes to be a race car driver. Oh, oh too soon. So yeah, I used to drive a manual transmission. Right. And then she said she hasn't driven a manual transmission since she was 12. So never. <laughs> so maybe never. Day two, we're feeling strong. First thing is we are doing some ABS drills and maneuvering drills so that we can quick break and get out of the way if something is in our way and also kind of have a better understanding of where that lock is on the brake so that we can push our limits on the track. You're gonna approach the accident box at 65. The braking cone's gonna be that tall white one. The goal is to trigger full ABS. So just get to the brake pedal as hard as you can. <laughs> So make sure we develop the speed because that's going to help with this. Again, it's easy at 50, 55, yeah. maybe Rapid even track. 60 miles an hour. But as we start to develop, let's say that's closer to 65 mile an hour, again, it puts you into the zone where you start to feel like you're going to panic. Okay. Just stay with it until it stops. Okay. Okay. Demi is going to hop into our skid car. This is the best tool we have on property. This is the one that explains why the vision is so important. So we're gonna see what Demi can do in our skid car. It's gonna give us a visual foundation. It's gonna give us an understanding of why the vision is so important. If I am looking further ahead, it's gonna give you the timing on where to steer the car, which is everything. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna give us the weight management control. The car's gonna slide. How do I gain the grip of the end of the car that's sliding? Now we're going into skid car. I actually love the skid car. I mean, who doesn't love the skid car? They don't say it's drifting, but it's kind of drifting. But it's skid car, so it's gonna be learning how to control oversteer and understeer. And I think we're gonna be pretty good at this. These two exercises complement each other. A donut is, again, trusting your eyes, looking where you want the front of the car to go. Throttle is going to control the angle. When the car slides, everything is more sensitive. So I want to use the gas pedal to control the angle of the car. If I give it more gas, I'll get more angle. Less gas will give it less angle. So your job is to balance that angle and look where you want to go. So you're managing two things at the same time. So visualizing where I want the car to be, not too far ahead because I'm not going very fast, but your head's almost on a swivel. I am always looking at the spot I want the car to be. I'll gently add the gas, the car will start to slide. I'm gonna continue looking where I want to go and feel the car as far as the angle and just keep the angle going. I'm just changing the toe to change the attitude of the car. If I want more angle, a little bit more gas, less angle, a little bit less gas, but I'm always controlling the car that seems out of control. Let's see how she feels. Bad communication, nice adjustment. Yep, use that brake, add the steering. Now you can turn it, point it back on that railroad track. Nice job, let's do that again. Like, do I need you to turn more this, than that? Uh, maybe a little bit more brake. That was very soft oh, on the brake. Okay. Yeah, and we can even get to the point maybe where you lock up a little bit. At least you know where you're at as far as the brake. So, yeah, like that's too much, now reduce. Right, you felt the lockup. Right? Oh, so whoa. depending on how much grip you have, depends on how much brake pressure I can give. Okay. With this car, there is no ABS, so I have to be careful on how much brake I use. So I can still use that brake pedal, but if I go too much, it's gonna lock up, so I just modulate the brake pedal. So it's not in the front, we use the brake, sets the nose, now we can turn it, point it, that's gonna control the car. Now, let us move into the oversteer. Okay, that's the rear of the car sliding. This one, again, when it does slide, steering and vision first. You just look where you want that car to go. Secondary will be a little bit of gas to help transfer that weight to the rear. But that's when the car starts to gain the grip. So look down the road, where do you want to be? Not enough <laughs> gas. Yeah, and then don't Sooner. look there, but look where you want to go. And don't worry about the gas so much. That's, again, vision first. So ask yourself that question, where do you want to be? It gives you that purpose, right? Point the car where you want it. Yeah, feel the difference? Yeah. That's control. That's what we're looking for.
Yeah, how you just said like the peripherals yeah. is the angle, that just changed it for me. Okay. It made way more sense. I think I'm doing pretty well at this. I love the overseer and underseal drills, that helps me a lot and I'm really looking forward to see how it helps me on the track. We just finished oversteering and understeering simulation right with the outriggers. How'd I do? How do you feel? I feel great. That's a lot of fun. What's your biggest takeaway on that one? I think that my biggest takeaway is especially when you're oversteering and understeering, you have to look where you want to go. Oh. And looking at the angle of the car in your perifs really helps you like identify where the car is and where you're aiming. Just keep looking where you need to go because especially if you're in a simulation where you're just like sliding all over the place to get the car back to where you want it, you just gotta vision it. It's all hand-eye coordination, so awesome job, that was solid. So now all the building blocks are set. The foundation is set. We did all the Mr. Miyagi exercise, we painted the fence, we sanded the floor. Now it's time to put all that together to use on the actual racetrack. This is Demi's first time on track. I'm going to coach her through each corner. We're going to see how it goes. Let's take an hour to move my seat, as Rob said. Because he's a bully. Look at him, he's laughing too. I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm laughing with you. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I'm not laughing. That's probably the closest Radford has had to anyone going that close to the steering wheel. It's probably not safe, but you know, I'm short and it's all I can do. <laughs> yep. Uh. All right, y'all. This is getting serious right now. That's strap one, strap two. Locked and loaded. We're locked and loaded, baby. All the things that the amazing Rob has taught me are now going to be implemented on the track and this is the time. Your girl's first time really getting on the track. I think I'm ready for it. Today, I feel really confident. My shifting's feeling good, and I'm excited to see if I have what it takes because this is really big for me. building blocks to get to this point Absolutely. now you're ready yeah. so from here you're on the track by yourself okay so you're not in there with me i will hop in with you but okay. you're on the track by yourself got so, it yeah cool. dude awesome. let's go so so rob has said she's a natural and have you always been a natural well i started when i was eight so i don't really know there you go <laughs> That's a yes. so you're gonna you're gonna go for a ride with him Perfect. are you gonna tell her anything while you're driving or are you just gonna do. I'm just gonna be silent the whole way. So the goal would be nice to show her what the car can do. I'm, you show her yeah, to drive, not she'll teach her to flip. Not today, not today. I need a stretch first. He's okay. Send like three He's hours scared. to stretch. Yeah. I'm 42, I'm old. So um is that is that your seat in position? Should we give it a go? Yeah. yeah, should you try to fit in there? Well there's yeah. that'll be good. <laughs> how did you get you how did you get your butt past the steering wheel? Dude, I'm just I'm tiny. Jensen is about to take me for a hot lap. Are you ready? I'm ready, are you? Yeah. you want to put your helmet on? Okay, okay. So they say you're a bit of a natural. I guess so. Yeah, and they just being nice. I know, I think so too. I think so. Sideways is not fast, just so you know. Yeah, just more But it's tires. fun! For the track, I would say. Exactly. So when you're actually racing, they don't have codes and stuff, right? No. So do you guys get like a practice run on the track, or do you get to like look at it on a map so that you know what you're doing? We drive in a simulator first. Of that track. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, but I mean, nowadays, because simulations have got so big, it's like you spend more time in the simulator than you did in reality. It's the thrill of the danger that is what we love. It's not the 
you know, the driving part is actually knowing there's if you, if you mess up yourself. Yeah. Whee! Why do you think you jump from different sports? I like the adaptation of being an athlete. I think there's not a lot of people that try to test their athletic abilities in like scenario adaptation. Yeah. Like there's a lot of athletes that are really great at what they do, but if you put them in another scenario, they like they get like freaked out, you know? Yeah. Well you've got to think that you're, you're 21, right? Yeah. I'm so Most people are at university until they're yeah, exactly. college. Yeah, exactly. So like a lot of people are like, you do so many things, I'm like, but when you're young, that's what you do. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, I would be in school right now doing sports. <laughs> They're gonna tell me off for doing that. It's okay. <laughs> Can't see anything. What got you into racing? I was eight when my dad bought me my first go kart. passed away but he was a racing driver yeah but not on circuit he was gonna smoke out he was more on dirt so okay. he used to do dirt driving that was his thing did you think that when you were younger you were gonna like pursue it or you just like doing it or you're kind of too young to know ah uh, too young to know then it was just like this is this is fun i get to race a go-kart at what uh, age did you know like this was it for you? this is a bit more serious when i was 14 okay i, started I mean, that's racing. still so young too yeah, I started racing in Europe, raced in America a couple of times, Japan, and that was when I just kind of knew that, that, that this is what I want to do and this is what I was good at. Where's your favorite? Sorry? Where's your favorite? Japan was, is such a good track. Um, really, really, really good track. And the Japanese are <laughs> such, such great fans as well of the sport. Oh, very, sure. very sportive. Um, yeah, so it was like when I was when I was 14, I knew if I did well, this could be positive. You know, racing wasn't big; it was quite a new category then. Yeah, um, like racing as a whole wasn't nearly as big. No, no, definitely not. I've never met someone so calm and passionate. Wow, that was yeah. awesome. Good, Good job. job. Thank you. I'd rather do keep, anything. Uh, keep, keep, it it keep it smooth. Keep it smooth when you drive. Okay. Yeah. I mean, sliding and everything's great, but if you actually want to become a driver, a racing driver, you got to learn how to be smooth and precise. Yeah, he was driving and he was like, this is good, and don't do this. <laughs> Drifting in the sliding and the donuts. It's the fun stuff, isn't it? It's the fun stuff, but she's here to learn how to race, and okay. that's why I appreciate you. So yes, cool. teeter off with that, please. Have a good one. So what's your, your one piece of advice? Keep it smooth, right? Keep it smooth. Yeah, see you later. Keep it smooth, baby. How did the racetrack feel for you, first of all? Literally, I wish we had a run from before he started teaching me to now because everything made sense in my head when I'm doing something wrong, I know what it is so I can provide that change and be more deliberate with that change because before I would have just been sliding all over the place and have no clue why. So I felt like today your and I's communication was great and what you were saying was really resonating with me because of the prior exercise that we did. And then the communication from the vehicle to you, right? So the car again slides, I'm looking where I wanna go. How do I know I'm going fast enough? The car's telling you, right? So we got to huge speed today, by the way, which was awesome. I mean, already you're at speed that we're usually on day three, so golden. We're gonna apply all that stuff to more driving tomorrow, and then they're actually gonna go into our starts and restarts for tomorrow. So um, actual race scenarios. So good times. Let's yes. go. All right, we'll see <laughs> awesome. y'all tomorrow. You guys have officially watched episode two of my racing journey. If you haven't seen episode one where it all started, you got to start from the beginning. But I'm so excited to go into week three with you guys, and I'll see you soon. Oh, no! My ass just got fully passed. I definitely got my ass handed to me from the boys, obviously. <laughs> but uh, we started to catch up a little bit. It was getting a little bit we'll better. See.